with alcohol bubbles. I can't say alcohol bubbles. People are going to think that it's the dolphin's drunk. I got it. Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm so excited to share with you how you can absolutely paint this underwater fantasy. If you're a brand new painter, don't worry, I've got your back. We're gonna explain every step of the process, everything you need to know, every technique, so you can create this underwater dolphin today. Get your paint, get your brushes, get your rubbing alcohol, and come back and meet with the easel right now. We're gonna get painting. Today's project has Holbein watercolor paint in the colors Permanent Yellow Deep, uh, Cobalt Blue Hue, and Marine Blue. On top of that, I have taken 140 pound watercolor paper by Strathmore and taped it down with low tack tape. I'm just putting the watercolor paint out on uh, palette paper. I've got rubbing alcohol. Any proof will work on this. I just happen to keep 91% in the studio because I work with acrylics a lot. I'm putting that in a cup aside. That's going to help me do the um, alcohol resist. I'm going to keep showing it to you so you know what I'm doing. I have a cat's tongue oval wash. This is a three quarter inch uh, black velvet. I'm going to get this brush wet and start putting out a wash. A wash should make your paper uh, be noticeably wet and shiny, but it shouldn't really buckle your paper. It shouldn't be anything like say that your dolphin could swim in. I pre-sketched in my dolphin on the paper and my note on that is look, if you're not a person who draws and you're looking at that thinking I'm never going to do it, I think it's okay to trace. I have those free traceables on my website, theartsherpa.com. You're welcome to go get them anytime you like. I'm putting out the water. You can see that there's a sheen on the paper, but it's not like a pond. It's not like soaked. And I'm getting water onto the brush. The thing that I like about these is that they pull in the right amount of water. This is a number eight round black velvet, and I'm gonna pull down sunlight streaks from the upper right corner down towards the lower left corner. Now, the trick is when you're putting this out, especially if you're working with the liquid watercolors like I am right here, the ones from the tubes, is that you come in it kind of cautiously from the side, adding water to it to get these washes out. Unlike pan acrylics, which are the dry ones that you're probably really familiar with that you add water to to activate, these have a lot of pigment load that you can get to really easily. So that's just the thing is to come in at it cautiously and reasonably. I'm just making a radiation of brush strokes, kind of like a fan coming out and dragging down. The idea being that water is lighter at the top and gets darker as you go down because the light falls off, right? And it starts to get richer. And so that's one of the things that I want to make sure that I represent in this. I am wetting the bottom of the page with that same oval. I'm not using that fantastic brush, which I probably could have done the whole thing with that brush because um, it's like three brushes in one. But I wanted the streaking that I would get with my beautiful round. So that's why I was using that. I'm getting into my marine blue. This is really kind of like a phthalo turquoise if you're looking for this in a, another type of, of watercolor. But I'm just looking for an aquatic kind of oceanic turquoise here. And so I really liked that color. You can see in my lower left screen where I did the um, color cards, so you could really tell what the colors were and how they'd mix. And I like this because it has uh, three colors in it as a project. One of the things that, yes, I'm making streaks in, and this is happening with my watercolor, but when you're working wet into wet with your pigment, something to keep in mind is, is it's going to settle. When you glaze, which is where you paint a wet streak of watercolor over dry watercolor, that color will stay where it is because the color goes where the water is, right? Well, in this case, the color goes where the water is. So wherever I'm putting this pigment, it's going to bleed out and soften. So everything here that I'm doing is not going to retain a hard edge. It's going to be loose. It's going to be soft, which is great for new painters because it's a very forgiving space to be in. I'm adding some of my yellow back in and I'm pulling these streaks down. I'm not worried about what's happening. I'm still working just the marine blue and the permanent yellow deep here. So this is just the marine blue and I'm pulling up the darker color. I'm adding more pigment to the bottom. 
because the water is darker. I haven't lost the sketch that I put in, which is if you do choose to trace it in, that's a good thing for you to know. I'm getting the cobalt blue. This is going to make the water feel cooler and deeper and further away from the sunlight as the dolphin is swimming up, you know, towards the surface. And so I'm going to want to just concentrate that a bit on the bottom and let that bleed up to the top. Um, again, trying to keep this paper wet. The only way my alcohol resist bubbles are going to work is if the paper's damp, at least damp, because it's got to be able to push the pigment and the water out when I drop it to make the effect. And so that's the kind of components of, of what I'm going to be working with here. You can see that I'm just carefully coming in from this outside edge and just working this in. Um, you can do this with washes in acrylic because of course you can do washes of acrylic on um, uh, watercolor paper and that'll work really 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 well. There's a lot of really cool things where water-based products kind of have some similar properties but with watercolor you're going to always be working from lightest to darkest so you might have noticed that I'm building up color here. I'm building up the color. Um, I can subtract a little bit. I like to say watercolor has like about two undos. And so, you know, I'm just adding. I am wiping all the water out of my brush because I'm about to get my alcohol. This is super fun what we're about to do right here. So I've got my alcohol. Again, it doesn't have to be 91%. Maybe 71%, just whatever you have at your local drugstore will do this. I just like the 91% because it moves acrylic really easily. Um, I'm making these drops and you can immediately see, isn't that like magic how it makes those bubbles? And I'm going to just put little drops of this around. Um, you know, I put one where I'm going to be painting over in black paint, but I like to try to get little overlaps so things have layers in the painting because that's what we're trying to create is these layers that tell that story and help urge that. It's real fun. E on this particular case, even if the alcohol drops off when I don't expect it to, I'm okay with it because I'm trying to make bubbles in the water. I'm trying to create this very soft, um, aquatic, dreamy feel. It should be very relaxing. This part of the painting is incredibly relaxing to do. I imagine this is a technique once you discover it that you're going to be playing with a lot. It's it's one of those, there are certain watercolor techniques or certain acrylic techniques, I think, that just call to new painters and get them excited about being creative again. This being one of those fabulous, fabulous things. Uh, and I don't think it really matters what your age is, whether you're, you know, 5 or 65 or 105. It just is fun to drop little bits of alcohol and make the paint go bloop, 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 doesn't it? It's just, I'm going to take that up into the sunlight because, of course, I want my bubbles to go up right? Because bubbles rise up through the water. Isn't that fun? And I'm just enjoying that. I'm just letting that drop off my little round here, having a good time, having a lot of fun. It's fun to see what else is out there. There's a lot of really cool watercolor projects that you can do. So this is a great thing to get into. And it's good for travel. I'm rinsing out my brush, getting the alcohol out of it, and I'm going to come and get my marine blue. And I'm going to load this brush with a fair amount of pigment and splatter it off. See, I'm doing this like little finger flick. That's how I get to load the brush up and then I just flick the top of it and it just, the pressure disperses it. Now, the paint is still damp. And because it's still damp, what is the pigment going to do? It's going to disperse. It's going to soften because the pigment goes where the water is. So it's going to completely pull out and these little splatters will become a very soft effect that isn't overwhelming to the piece. If you wanted these splatters to be really intense and show and be like hard edge drops, you would wait till the piece dried and then splatter. And that's how you get those two results. Everything watercolors, whether you're working it dry or working it wet into wet, and that's how you kind of get your two basic kind of plays in that space. I'm going to get some yellow for some sazzle, right? You got to have some zazzle. Let's put some zzz. Look at that. That really just pops it. But again, don't worry if initially it seems like you might have overwhelmed it. Give it a second. Let it rest because it's going to soften. It's going to mellow out quite a lot. So that's something to realize. That's an area of watercolor is forgiving. I let it dry completely and I get my black gesso. You could use black paint. You could use any ink. I mean, do let it be dry. That really helps because otherwise, where's the pigment going to go? 
where the water is. I've got a number four bristle on round here. This is for acrylic paint. Um, it has a very nice sharp point and just allows me to sort of like, it's a bit like having a pen on paper, you know, but it's not, it's paint. I like the black gesso because it's very matte and it's inexpensive, but it's still really high quality. So there's a lot of things that I like about it and I tend to go get it. It's not really a right or wrong thing, it's just a preference thing. You could use black craft paint. You could use, uh, you know, a golden Mars black paint. Wh whatever you want to use in your silhouette here will work because this is that kind of a piece. I'm going to definitely um, paint this in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my edges first and then fill in. So I see my little pencil and I'm going to definitely fill it in. Again, if you're not somebody who draws yet, and I say yeah, because you can always learn it. Just like you're going to learn painting, you can learn drawing. Just like you might be doing acrylic now and you're taking up watercolor. Or maybe you're doing watercolor and you're taking up pastel. These are just new skills. Just keep adding to your art skill set. Be a Pokemon, you know, trainer. Catch all those art skills and collect them all up. And then you can use them as you need them for different situations. You'll never be sorry for an art skill that you learn or technique that you acquire. It will come up again and some point in the future and always be fun so and also never feel bad if you don't do it yet you can't know everything right away it's wonderful to be student it's wonderful to be new always feel really good about that space I think students should just wave their new flags as high as they can because you won't be new forever so really enjoy this time I'm just filling this in and making sure that this is matte black it's kind of the look I'm going for it. The piece is gonna frame up beautifully. You can do this for a lot of projects. Um, this particular piece of paper is six by nine. So, you know, that's sort of the look I was going for there. It was just something I could easily frame and, and hang and have it be kind of a cute little piece to look at. Hopefully you're enjoying the process of painting this piece. There is definitely um, more watercolor out there going on. I really love this media. I think there's a lot to do. Um, there's really no end to art. Art is one of those endlessly fun discovery spaces. So, you know, that's something that I personally want to say to you is find more. Never, never stop being excited about it because it's always exciting. I'm going to sign. I'm going to get a number zero round black pearl to sign. I'm going to find an interesting place to sign if you're going to sign your piece, which I like to because it helps people know who did it, but you don't have to. A lot of artists don't. Um, really, it's your studio, so kind of your rules. In your studio, on your easel, on your art table, it's sort of your way. So, you know, do the things that feel great to you and don't worry about the things that aren't really speaking to you today. Maybe they'll speak to you tomorrow. Maybe they won't. It's hard to say. So I'm putting my name in there, making my mark. I hope you had a lot of fun painting this watercolor with me. Check out the iCard for a, another really fun um, water media painting with Ginger Cook Live. And I definitely cannot wait to see your paintings. Two thumbs up. Gave myself the thumbs up. Thumbs up to you. I want to see you at the easel really soon doing art projects. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Bye-bye. <laughs>